I don't know why I have to carry this thing every week. Why don't you well, take it home with you once I've in a while? I've got to fix my tie and everything because this is yeah, going to be a good show, Jack. Yeah. Why don't you tell those people that? Well, what a ham. That's Whitey Harris. I'm Jack Buck, and we're very happy that you're going to join us in Top Star Bowling. We're at the Marlboro Lanes, and we've got a reserved seat just for you. You'll be able to see everything perfectly. Come on inside. <laughs> Well, the weeks come and go, and here we are with another edition of Top Star Bowling. Jack Buck here will be introducing Whitey Harris after a while, and we find ourselves just off of Route 66 in the village of Marlboro, the Marlboro Lanes. We're right near the city of St. Louis, the gateway to the west, where more money will change hands once again. We have a fellow who's back for the second time, having defeated Bob Strampy, who previously had won three matches. And before introducing our defending champion and the challenger, a bit about the show. $1,000 to the winner, $500 to the loser, Three games and total pins. In addition, Billy G's series of 686 and a high game of 258 still stand. And King Louis Shirts gives $1,500 for that high series and $1,000 for the high game. So a lot to shoot at today. Our defender is from Akron, Ohio, and now St. Louis, here for his second week, a product of junior bowling, a former Masters champion, a host of individual and team titles, Dick Hoover. Good to see you. Hi, Jack. It's real nice to be back. Another week, and uh, you're a product of junior bowling, and you have a fellow who's been one of the mainstays of bowling for a long, long time. You've bowled against him before. Yes, I have. He's uh, one of the old timers in the game, but he's still doing very well, Jack. You bowled with him, too, did you not, on a team? Or am I confused with somebody else? No, I don't believe I've ever bowled with Buddy on the team. I've bowled across the lane several times with him, but uh, I don't think I've ever bowled on the team with him. Okay, we have a fine match coming up. This fellow is from Chicago. We've already referred, referred to him. A lot of titles, including BPAA events. And his name is Herbert Booth Bomar. <laughs> Buddy, good to see you. Thank you, Jack. You can call me anything when it comes time for money or food, so just call me out anytime. Okay, we, uh, we don't fool around up here. We'll get the match underway. Who won the toss? Dick won the toss. And what's going to happen? Who's going to lead off? I'm going to lead off on 21. And what are you going to throw? Well, I hope it's all strikes, but... Uh, you, you know, you can't always depend on it. I heard that little deal you were making with him before. You said you win high game and I'll win the high series. Yeah, how about that? You didn't go for that, did you? No, not this time, anyhow. <laughs> Away we go, gentlemen, with a handshake and the best wishes yeah, to both of you. Dick Hoover, Buddy Beaumont. Three games, total pins. Hope you enjoy it. It is Buddy Bomar leading off on 21. Buddy from Chicago. Against Dick Hoover. And he starts with a strike. Whitey Harris is alongside. Whitey, the ball didn't sound too good when he put it down, did it? Well, I think that's, uh, Buddy does loft the ball out, Jack. So it won't be a case of, he does that intentionally. Sort of kills the ball for his type ball. And now Dick Hoover, who rolled a 639 last week to earn the right to return. Barely got to the head pin, leaves the 245 in his first delivery. Dick is a husky individual, as you can discern. He's 5'11", weighs 215. Buddy is uh, much smaller, 5'11", 170 pounds. But it doesn't seem to make much difference uh, with regard to the size of these bowlers. Hey. He leaves the four pin, and most everybody in the house knew it was going to be like that. Whitey, there's an empty seat there, and I see that uh, your girlfriend has failed to arrive. What is it this week? I might say, where is is? Uh, talking about a gal who's here at all these top star bowling events, but hasn't shown uh, for this one. Maybe that's what Dick Hoover's thinking about. Can't keep his mind in his game. Once again, he fails to get to the head pin. Gets an eight count, leaves the one, two. You're right, I can't mm. keep my mind on the score when is is his. How come they didn't anybody else sit there? I should have sat down there. Well, there's only one empty seat, Whitey. How could you sit there? I don't get much to do here. I can't talk. 
Dick Hoover gets a spare in the second frame. <laughs> and now Buddy Bomar, who got a strike in the first frame, will try for the double, trying to get out in front in this match. The Marlboro Lanes are certified, of course, by the ABC, and these particular lanes being employed are so certified. He's on the nose, but it leaves a 4 7. And top star bowling is sanctioned by the American Bowling Congress. As I mentioned at the outset, Billy Golombievsky of Detroit has the high series 686, high game 258. The winner of this one takes on Bill Pace. And as Buddy moves over the other lane, what about Bill Pace, Buddy? Well, Bill Pace actually is from around this area, Jack, and he then has gone into Georgia where for a while there he was one of the great bowlers of South then went into Kansas City where he lives now but he is an outstanding athlete despite a condition of which uh, because of illness as a child he's been able to overcome. Bomar shook the 10 pin just a bit but left it. That gives him 39 through the second frame. Big Hoover open then a spare. Don't mean to leave you leaning there in regards to Bill's condition. Uh, the idea. Talking about the bad leg that he has. Hmm? Actually, it was an inf infantile paralysis, and he had over a hundred operations. But yet, when you see him out on the lanes, he's right in there pitching as good as any of the rest of them. He's had a fa he's got a fabulous record. And again, it goes along with the thing of which not we try to teach or sell people, but the therapeutic value of bowling. Cooper's trying to get well here. Leaves the 10 pin again. So he has yet to strike. This is third frame. When he gets on a string, why, he can run him out in the second game against uh, Bob Strampy last week. He had 10 strikes. Shooting the 10 pin. Frightened a few of the folks. Gets his spare. So he has the only open, and that's the difference in the match so far. Actually, 11 pins separate the two. Hoover throws the ball um, extremely fast. Faster than most of the other good bowlers. There he is with a strike. You know, for more and more industries, bowling has become the number one form of employee recreation. Recreation directors vouch for the value of company leagues as morale boosters. Leagues are so popular that special leagues had to be organized for retired employees. There's another facet of organized bowling. Strike for Bomar. Chatting with a buddy uh, beforehand, asking him how he's been doing, and he said extremely well as of late. Previously he had a bursitis condition, which bothered him a bit. Now he's right back into the swing of things and hitting them well. He takes pretty well uh, a lot of the approach, Jack, for his height. He's way in the back of it. He's going for a strike here in the fifth frame. And a double, he gets it. And now it'll be Dick Hoover coming up trying to equal that double. No 10 pen. At one time, uh, Dick Hoover held a record which has since been broken. He was the youngest ever to bowl a 300 game. As a teenager, he bowled a series of 847. Going for his spare. In the fifth, he gets it. So Buddy Bomar has 59 through the third with a double. Dick Hoover has 68 through the fourth with a spare up. Dick oftentimes bowls with Glenn Allison as his doubles partner in various events. And that's a, that is not an unusual carry for Dick Hoover. When he gets up to the head pin, as the ball rolling so much and so fast that it'll drive on through and get to five pin. A lot of average bowlers with a comparable hit 
would leave that five pin. Buddy Bomar has a double. Looking for three, right over the third out. Finds his mark, that's his three bagger, and he's gonna be tough. The winner stays around to take on the next opponent, who will be, as we told you a while ago, Bill Pace. Eddie Buddy. Marin will be next in line. Buddy holds his hand over that hand dryer too, Jack, to get set there. And it's interesting to note his that his stride is he has a figure eight when he brings the ball back. I see he had the same kind of a hit that uh, Hoover had, but they're throwing entirely uh, different balls. That's a 2-4-5 remaining for Buddy. You agree with me, Whitey? Yes, that's right. Just barely got to that head pin. It was a pretty close match last week. Hoover won by only 13 sticks over Bob Strampy. Buddy hasn't opened. He's in the seventh frame. And he covered it nicely. Mr. Bomar, uh, well, we'll tell you more about this when we're looking at him again, is one of the outstanding instructors in the game. Meanwhile, let's concern ourselves with Dick Hoover. He is concerned with getting a double. How can they stand up when you hit him like that? He goes up to that line rather rapidly. He increases his speed as he gets toward the foul line. Yes. Starts slowly and then increases his speed. That's probably, Jack, what uh, helps him get so much speed because whenever you rush the foul line, you usually do throw the ball pretty hard, and he's a good example of it. But with it, he's got control, so we don't advise people to rush the foul line. Leaves a 4 7. He knows he'll take two slow steps and then two rapid steps and lets the ball go. Well, his double. Uh, Helped someone, but he still trails because of that three bagger that Buddy has, and also because of the open in the first frame. Going for the spare in the eighth frame. Hoover gets it. Buddy is in the uh, bowling business, aside from earning a living. By actually rolling, he has uh, a lot of other activities. Doesn't go in for, there's the strike. Doesn't go in for golf like a lot of the other bowlers do. That seems to be the main hobby of these professional bowlers, Whitey. Oh, yes, Jack. He, uh, I don't mean to interrupt him. He uh, likes to play the game, but you mean like uh, going on the tournament trail and things like that? Mm -hmm. Did no. you ever know anybody who combined the two sports? No, we haven't reached that stage yet. I think it'd be quite difficult. He turned away from it, but he still got the strike. He uh, actually, just briefly on Buddy, he's doing an outstanding work as an instructor, uh, teaching people to be instructors now, Jack. Hoover threw that one out the window. He was working on a spare. He got an eight count. Got an eight count. And that hurts him a bit when opposed to that double presented by Bomar. This is the ninth frame for Hoover. Hoover's had only three strikes. Half a dozen for his opponent. Came rather close to missing that one. I think uh, we won't ask him, Jack Ernie, until after the match or so, but maybe you hit it on the head. He, he's been running to the line so fast that he's throwing that ball, and it's staying out there. Now he's high, got away from the split, leaves a six pin. This is the 10th frame for Hoover. So he totals 173 through the ninth. The best he can do is spare, and then a 10 count for 193. 246 if Bomar were to go all the way. That'd be quite a differential. There's the spare. Even at that, he wouldn't be in too bad a shape were it not for that first frame miss. And a 10 count. 
Finishes with 193, and he'll make uh, use of the knowledge gleaned from that last delivery when the second game comes around. Now, Beaumont has a double, and he's in the roll-off. Needs three for 246. The first one very important. He's going to be ahead, but by how much? No strike. Leaves the six pin, and he seemed to say, I'll take that. Two twenty five now. Taking spare and strike. He'll be thirty two pins ahead if that happens. There's one part of it. Previous All Star Tournament winner, member of All American teams. Jack, note this figure eight. We're in a good position to see where that ball comes back. And he finishes with a nine count and a two twenty four. Two twenty four, one ninety three for Dick Hoover. A thirty one pin advantage for Buddy at the end of the first game. Few remarks to be made before the second game gets underway here at Marlboro. And a 31 pin advantage for Buddy Bomar. Buddy had six strikes in the first game and uh, Dick had four. That along with the first frame open on the part of Hoover tells the story in the pin differential. But one little item last week uh, Bob Strampy had won the first game and Hoover trailed by just about the same amount and ended up by eventually winning. Also a year ago in top star bowling Dick was here four times before he was eliminated. But all of that remains to be seen. Let's see what occurs in game number two here on Top Star Bowling. You're the one, Whitey, who reminded me that Hoover was behind at the end of the first game last week. It didn't take him long to overcome that disadvantage. Let's see what happens now. He did a little. He did a little thinking. After Buddy gets through and Dick gets up there, it's storytelling time about some of the things that have happened in Top Star Bowling last year, and it'll refer to Dick. So we'll wait till Buddy completes his two frames, Jack. Buddy Bomar on 22 on the nose and leaves a 10 pin. In this way, we'll keep a lot of people sitting at the sets, hoping to hear my beautiful voice tell this little tale. There's a spare now. Somebody boom up. So often we've co commented, Jack, about the pros, and Buddy is the same way. Hey, there's a there's a gal down here, Buddy. She must have got in during the during the commercial. I think you'd be the one to ask her where she was. I'm not going to. She missed the first game. Bomar gets tapped. He wrapped that six pin right around the ten. Totals 19 in the first frame. Failed to get the strike. Wouldn't it be wonderful? Looks pretty good this week, doesn't she? She looks good every week to me. Wouldn't it be wonderful if she had been bowling somewhere else? Yeah, I suppose. Man, you came back fast with that one. <laughs> Bomar just hung on. The storytelling time, Jack. Do you recall when Dick was blowing, bowling Glenn Bikesley? He was 48 pins behind, and he came through and won the match with a 257 game. So that's why this guy's so dangerous. 48 behind in the last game. Yeah, in the last game. Two five for a while, but the five pin went down. He leaves the two, and he failed the double. Thirty one pins behind about thirty pins behind right now. He gets a spare. Dick Cooper a two time champion of the ABC Masters. Whereas Buddy stands way back on the approach uh, Jack Dick stands at the 12 foot area which is the second row of dots towards the head pin. He slowed down on that approach. 
We pointed it out before. He took uh, two slow steps and then two rapid steps, but his speed is uh, quite the same now throughout. Omar has two spares. He's bowling in the third frame. No ten pin. That's the ten pin over there. In the first frame. Had six strikes in the first game. Didn't leave any ten pins. Hoover has left a couple. Fair for Buddy. As soon as he's ready to go, that ball will be back. I'm certain that bowlers wouldn't want to bowl any more rapidly than the Brunswick A2 automatic sends that ball back. Wouldn't have time to figure your score. There's a hit for him. That's his first strike of this game. Now Dick Hoover with a chance to double and chop away at that 29 pin deficit. Second game last week he bowled 255. And he leaves a 2-8. Jack 2-8 here while this is where that Brunswick pin finder lights up and those lights remain on. And the difficult part about this spare is that eight pin right directly behind the two pin. You've got to hit this shot full. See how Hoover goes for it. He's been pretty touchy on a couple of ten pins and on that carry too. So there's a spare in the fourth. He's picked up only two pins so far in this game and now Bomar who has a strike in the fourth will have a chance to do further damage to Hoover. In there. Tell me about that 810, Whitey. I can tell you. He gets quite a few of them, doesn't he? Yes, that's what we, I think we spoke about it before, Jack. And uh, one time in a top star bowling match, Dick won 28 frames without an opening. On the 29th pitch, he got an 810. Here it comes back. Sometimes he hits that eight pin extremely hard. Gets that kick back and carries that split, but not that time. So he had an open in the first game, a miss, and now a split. That's the first split of this match, and Bomar could really cash in with a double. Third arrow on the nose. And the 3-6-10. He wanted yeah. that other pin to go down. No. Uh, actually, Jack, he would rather have it stand there. And I think you and I have kicked this around. These pros would rather shoot at the 3-6-10 rather than the baby split. It's one of the strangest things. They'll miss the 3-10 more than they will the 5-7. Just, just like I told you. And so, the fifth frame is an open for each. Buddy Momar has 86. Dick Hoover has 87. Momar comes back from his open with a strike. Let's see what Hoover will do. That was the first open for Buddy Bomar. Buddy had 224 in the first game, 193 for Dick Hoover. Neither has gotten hot in this one. Boy, this is a sure hard way to be picking up pins, isn't it? He's just one and one. one. Now he strikes and matches the strike that Buddy threw at him in the sixth. That's the third strike for Hoover. He had only four in the first game. Jack, I imagine it's picking it up too. When he hits those pins, you can hear that the ring that ball just hits in there solid. Bomar has a strike in the sixth and Dick Hoover came right back at him with a double. 87 through the fifth with a double for Hoover. Bomar 86 with a strike up. <laughs> if 
Buddy Bomar is still well ahead in the match, but he has to equal the Dick Hoover double as he rolls in the seventh frame. And he does. I thought that ball might go a little high on him, but it held nicely. And he got his strike. And now we go into the eighth frame of the second game to determine the winner for $1,000. 500 to the loser. Bill Pace takes on the winner here next week at Marlboro. Had the 810 for a while and he got away from her. I wonder what he said. Mumbled a bit as he came back. And leaves the door open for Hoover to continue his string. What are you grinning about, Whitey? Nothing, Jack. I just happen to have the wrong pencil in my hand, the one without the eraser. Hoover is up in the eighth frame looking for three in a row to dig into that lead. Wow, what a hit, huh? What a hit. Ninth frame strike could be the one, Jack, because when you get that strike in that ninth frame, plus with Dick having three in a row, that could pick up that whole margin that Buddy had. Hoover now has five strikes in this game. Three in a row, going for four. Ninth frame, got the ball out, got the strike. He needed it, he got it. Now he's going to force Buddy to get on him here. Bomar started with 224, Hoover 193. Hoover had an open, a split. Buddy's ninth frame. Strike for him. So now each goes into the tenth frame. Certain he was going to get that one, but he did. He could go on to a 215 game. I think you can classify that, Jack, as a mixing or working ball. In fact, I just heard one of the audience say that's a working ball. Really, it is when the pins are spilled like that. Hoover could get 237. Bomar could get 215. He, he might very well end with 215, too. So time to get him. He now has six strikes. Three in a row. A ninth frame strike, which Whitey referred to a while ago, being cashed in on by Bomar. And he carried the ball and ends with 215. 224 for Bomar and 215. 439. Now, Hoover started with 193. He's got four in a row, and he's in the 10th frame. Okay. <laughs> he got stuck a little bit up there. We've talked about it before. It could be uh, any number of things. His opponent could be leaving some tracks there on the uh, approach, maybe some drops of perspiration. Does not reflect on the conditions of the lanes, but rather the circumstances which prevail. So that was five in a row for him. And that stops him. 225, however could pick up 11 and trail by 20. So you can see how important that strike was to him. There's the spare, not 225 is what he ends with. 418 total for Dick Hoover at the end of the second game. Buddy Bomar, 439. Bomar ahead by 21 pins now. Before watching what Hoover and Bomar are doing, the third and final game here on Top Star Bowling, let's welcome uh, a gal whom you all know from the world of bowling, the queen 
of the sport, Marion Ladewig. Hi, Marion. How are you doing? Fine, Jack. Thank you. Busman's holiday, huh? Yes, well, a little bit. <laughs> Happy to see uh, that you're in town and took the time to come over here and watch these two. No way of predicting a winner in this particular match, is there? No, it's too soon to, to try to pick a winner right now. Marion, one mm -hmm. thing that I've been campaigning for, and I wonder if you'll agree with me, I'd like to see the gals, both some of the men, just on the draw, draw the hat and see what would happen here on Top Star Bowling. Would you go along with that? Women bowl against the men? Yeah. It'd be a little different. It'd be some fun, wouldn't it? Well, with a little handicap, it would oh, be Oh, right. yeah, yeah. <laughs> You need a handicap. You need a handicap. Marion, uh, I know that you're interested in uh, some of the uh, younger gals, extremely young gals, who've come along and made their mark in the sport of bowling. There have been a lot of good ones, haven't there? Oh, yes, and there are more coming up all the time, Jack. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. We've had Judy Oddsley here and Joy Abel. And yes. Of course, uh, Laverne has been around for a while. Mm -hmm. I was going to say something about you being a grandmother. You are, huh? I'm very proud of it. Well, I bet you are. <laughs> How many? Five. Five grandchildren? Mm hmm Wow. <laughs> they bowl? Uh, the oldest two are beginning to bowl. Uh, one is nine, the other is seven. Mm -hmm. is, that, is that a good age to start the youngsters bowling, would you say, Mary? Yes, I think uh, as soon as they're able to handle the ball, I start them at the foul line. Mm -hmm. Just standing there and throwing? Yes, uh -huh. and once they're able to swing the ball, then gradually we add the steps. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you use the full-size ball or not? No, mm -hmm. nine-pound ball. Nine-pound ball mm -hmm. to start, and at the foul line, long about the age they're able to handle it, huh? That's right. Mm -hmm. Well, Marion, uh, you sit back there and enjoy the remainder of the match, and uh, I know you're not rooting for either one of the individuals here, huh? I'm just rooting for good scores. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Marion. Good to see you. My pleasure. Thank you. Marion Lattaway. <laughs> 439 to 418. Buddy Bomar has been ahead throughout. Dick Hoover did a little bit about that in the last game. Now what's going to happen here on Top Star Bowling? Buddy Bomar leads off in this third game. He's on 21 and he leads by 21. Uh oh, well, down went the four pin. He leaves the six ten. You know what I'm smiling at, Jack? What? Of course, our great Stan Musil has established all records. Back to the point of. Uh, I think a grandfather. I don't think he could ever be a grandmother. And a spare. Yeah. <laughs> You're right, Whitey. And now it's Dick Hoover on 22. Hoover had seven strikes, Bomar seven strikes in the second game. Oh, everybody in the house thought he was going to get one that time. Leaves a seven pin. I think we'll put an arrow on that one for remembering, Jack, because that was a tremendous hit. Once again, you get back to the speed with which he throws the ball, huh? And he'll probably generate more as this match gets tighter and tighter. First game, Bomar had two more strikes than Hoover. Bomar had a miss in the fifth frame of the second game. The Cougar had a miss in the very first frame of the match. Hoover has had the only split. I don't have to say anything because that was the last word out of my mouth before that four, seven, nine, ten popped up. Does he have a chance in this one, Whitey? Yes, he'll stand it right, and as we can see the position now, Jack, and he'll try to cut that board pin across to take in the nine and ten. Yeah, that uh, one pin almost came back up, but not quite. So there's an open for Dick. Let's we'll see what Bomar does about it. How often that happens. He leaves a 4-6, comes right back with one of his own. Neither a bowler in particularly good shape to fire away at the 258 or the 686. 
high game and high series here on top star bowling. A nine count for Buddy. They each open. Actually, with the splits, while Bomar picks up three additional pins, he's 24 ahead with eight frames to go. Jack, it's, uh, you're so right on that. Uh, when a man, another opponent commits an error, how the the other fellow come right back with one. Or when he strikes, the other fellow comes back with a strike. <laughs> Let's see if it prevails here. Each had a spare in the first frame, each split in the second. Each a spare in the first, each a split in the second, and each wants to win this match. The four seven. He had one pin scooting across the uh, lane there, but and hard enough to take down that four seven, but it didn't make contact. I think what he's doing now, Jack, he one pitch has been fast and one slow. He hasn't and they can't get back to his uneven speed. So the advantage swings further toward Bomar because there's one less frame to bowl. In addition, Buddy has that strike. This is the second effort on top star bowling for Hoover. He defeated Bob Strampy, who had won three in a row. Hoover rolled 639 last week. He's in the fourth frame. He had to work for that one. Now Bomar with a chance to double. Funny how enthusiastic the audience can get, Jack, and this one encouragement to have Dick's ball bend it. You could hear it all over the place. Bunny's almost 50 years old. He's still going strong. Gets the double. Buddy probably would be the last one, Jack, to ever be classed in the senior citizen group, although now there is the organization that's okayed by the ABC, the senior citizens. L7 pin as he was going for three in a row. He was in a position right there to blanket Hoover pretty well. Spare for Bomar. Now Hoover will have to strike to uh, to strike and double to stay even in this particular game. He'll still be down by 21. The importance of him getting a strike, Jack, not only for his score, but I think the psychological advantage that'll place in his favor over Bomar when he sees him getting this double. Here previously on 22, he left the four seven and a solid seven. <laughs> Almost left the four pin that time, but he got the double. Now this game is just about even, but the match isn't. Bomar's still out in front. Bomar has 76 through the fourth with a spare. Dick Hoover 44 through the third with a double. Those are the first strikes for Hoover in this game, and now he's looking for three. And he gets it. Boy, he's really bearing down up there, isn't he? Tearing himself apart after he uh, delivers that ball. Looked like he'd give a signal with his hand for that ball to make the turn around the corner, but it didn't need any more turn. It really mixed those pins. Buddy would like to get on a strike. He has a spare up in the fifth. But he couldn't strike. Leaves the four seven. Well, that 21 pins can disappear in a hurry right now. There's his spare. 94 through the fifth with a spare. Dick Hoover is about 11 pins behind right now, projecting a bit with that three bagger he has going. Seventh frame for Beaumont. Third arrow. He hit his mark that time. And he gets his strike. That's his third strike of this game. Each has had one open. Bowling in a hurry, aren't they? Looks like. Uh, no waiting around for that ball to come back. 
I think the bowlers prefer it this way. Well, it, this type of bowler's jacket really keeps him in the groove, and then for a lot of the other bowlers, it, it actually takes the weight out of bowling. Seventh frame, looking for four. Dick Hoover bombs one. Four in a row for Hoover, and this match is becoming increasingly exciting. Don't forget that Bomer has a strike in the seventh. This one's just about even right now, Eddie. Yes, that, uh, I won't interrupt Dick here, but. Well, he was at 4-7, he wanted that one. If he brings this back, he'll give him 152 through the seventh. Bomar's ahead by about three pins right now. In the match, not in this game. 152 through the seventh with a spare up for Hoover, and Bomar has a strike working. This is a key strike, definitely, for Buddy Jack to maintain that lead. If he catches this one, why it puts Dick again behind the huh. score. Wow, what a getaway that was. A 4-7, so it looks as if each is going to spare in the eighth. If he brings this back, it will give Buddy 134 through the seventh. And Bomar will still be three pins ahead. That's the way it is. Three pins ahead for Bomar as we go into the ninth frame for both. Each has bowled through the eighth. All right, Jerome? Yes, well, Buddy's coming up here in the ninth, Jack, and uh, I think you've said it time and again, again, in this match particular, this ninth frame strike is very important to Buddy. Of course, if he keeps hitting, Hoover can't catch him. How about that for a carry? If he keeps hitting, why? Now Hoover, <laughs> if he could get four in a row, could go to 232. The best Buddy could do would be 214. Could be a three pin difference when it's all over. Hoover strikes. It's still a three pin difference in favor of Bomar. I think it's interesting sometime, Jack, or were just last time. Let the people that are viewing figure this out sometime. Why should we always be telling them? <laughs> Especially on a close one like this. They know it's only three pins. We're in the tenth frame. If Hoover strikes out, Bomar will have to strike out. And no strike that time. Solid four pin. He could go on to 212. All Bomar has to do now is mark. Yes, that's all, Jackie. But he, he has to mark. He has to mark, yeah. Of course, we're anticipating that Hoover will get that, and <laughs> we're anticipating that Hoover would get that and then get a good pin count on his next delivery. He sure hit that four pin solid, didn't he? Wow. That would have done it right there. Bomar has a strike working on the ninth. He'll be coming up in the tenth, needing a mark to win the match. Hoover ends with two, ten. Does he still need the mark? Yes. Two ten for Hoover. Two twenty five, one ninety three, and a total of six twenty eight. Let's see what Buddy does now. No split, buddy. He's got to get that baby split. Right? He has to pick a jack. 174, 84. It's a $1,000 ball, and I... Yes, sir, right here. He's got to get this. That's all there is to pick it. it. And uh, we won't say anything, but this is that rough 310. How'd you like to be out there? My knees would crumble. Is buddy going to get it and win the $1,000 and come back? <laughs> I thought he had it, Whitey. It was going there in our position here, Jack. Gee, that was rough. I thought he had that. <laughs> he has with 182 and 621, and Dick Hoover wins the match by seven pins, 628 to 621.
I'm certain that most anything we do following that very thrilling match here on Top Star Bowling will be anticlimactic. Yet we have uh, time remaining. The prize money has yet to be awarded. So let's kick it around a bit with Dick Hoover and Buddy Bomar. And as they come up, let them know how much you enjoyed the match. Will you please? <laughs> Dick, congratulations. Thank you. That's heck to be sitting there, isn't it? Unable to do anything about uh, the final outcome. That's right. They say there's no protection in this bowling game except sitting there on the bench and sweating it out. And uh, that was certainly a tough one for Buddy to lose there. It looked like he had the split covered all the way down, and the ball just seemed to slide just a little bit right at the end, uh, enough to miss it. Mm -hmm. When uh, when Buddy missed that, the first thought that came to my mind was, uh, well, it's going to be Heck standing up there at the end of the match and uh, talking with him. But then I remembered who I was dealing with. And there really is no problem, but Bud, that's a heartbreaker. I bet you've lost a lot of heartbreakers, but none any worse than this, huh? Well, I think anyone that you lose, Jack, is hard to win. But I don't know, like you say, I've been bowling 34 years now, and I've won some the same way, so I guess it all balances out. It only hurts for a little while. <laughs> <laughs> we'll know when the checks come out. Here. Yeah. <laughs> this sets up a little drama for next week, uh, Dick. You know who the opponent is, Bill Pace. Yes. Do you I recall know. last year in Top Star Bowling? Yeah, I certainly do. And Tell uh, us what happened. Well, I think I was leading by about 60 pins going into the last game. And it uh, came down to about the ninth or tenth frame, and all those pins had seemed to have gone somewhere. And uh, it came up, and Bill, all he needed then, I think, was either a strike needed a mark, or just a mark. Like, just like Buddy did. And, uh, well, he gave me the match. He chopped the two off the five. Right. I remember that because Pace reminded me of it. <laughs> and he wanted me to remind you. Well, I didn't want to remind him of it uh, before we start because he's liable to, you know, be out to get me this year. And he's a tough bowler, so uh, I'll need all the pins that I can get. There are a few other things that happened uh, in the match up until the roll-off, buddy. Uh, you, had, you had a strike on the nose, and uh, Dick had one that toppled over. And Those were good hits. They just felt funny. <laughs> <laughs> How about the money now? Should we take care of it? The young lady who is a graduate of the John Robert Powers, Powers School of Modeling and the Pat Allen Agency in St. Louis, Carol Yeager is the money gal this week. Carol, how are you? Walk right in here, will you please? This side. You have the money for, yes. first of all, for Buddy. Buddy Bomar, $500. No, uh, no remarks to make him feel any better about the situation? <laughs> sure, I'm sorry. <laughs> How's that make you feel? Well, that helps a little bit. Of course, uh, after $500, you know, you just don't throw down the drain. I'm tickled to death. And, Connie? And for Mr. Hoover, $1,000. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Miss Yeager. Thank you. <laughs> Buddy, uh, I don't know what to say after you miss one like that and after you lose the match like that, so I'll just say you're always great to be with. I know the people here at Marlboro have enjoyed having you around and having you bowling in this country. Thank you very much, Jack. I know the whole thing about bowling, you know, you never get too old to bowl. There's always the next year. I'll be back. Thank you very much, buddy. Well, it's uh, been an interesting session here with a great match, along with a visit with uh, Marion Latterwig. And uh, next week, that rather uh, dramatic meeting between Bill Pace and Dick Hoover. Bowlers remember things like that, don't they, Dick? Who beat them before and so forth? Yeah, I'm afraid so. Huh? Now, last year, uh, you won four times before you were knocked off. That's right, Jack. And now you've got 2,000 in your kick, and you're assured of at least another 500, and so that, that roll-off was so important. How about your speed up here? Why do you want to, Whitey and I were commenting about it. Were you fishing around a little bit with regard to the speed of your approach? No, well, I was trying to keep my approach slow. I mean, that's the biggest fault that not only the star bowlers make, but also the beginner bowlers. They'll get up here, and they'll approach the foul line too fast. So you've got to keep your speed uh, slowed down, especially me, because I have a tendency to throw the ball hard. And when I do that, why well, the ball will slide further and won't get to roll down at the end that I need to carry the pins. You carried just enough this week. Thank you. Dick, congratulations. Thank you. And in case you haven't heard me say it before, Marlboro Lanes are located on Route 66 in the village of Marlboro, just southwest of the city of St. Louis, which is called the Gateway to the West. Next week, another edition of Top Star Bowling with Dick Hoover and Bill Pace. Hope you'll tune in because I know you'll enjoy it. Now speaking for Whitey Harris, Jack Buck says thanks for your time this time. Till next time, so long. Top Star Bowling has been presented by...
bowling equipment by Brunswick, the number one name in bowling. Top Star Bowling is sanctioned by the American Bowling Congress.